Welcome to week five of the Summer Sugar Quilt Along. If you are just stumbling onto this video, this video is a part of a series of six videos that walks you through the construction of the Summer Sugar Quilt. If you look in the comments section, I've noted where you can grab the pattern and supplies. Also, if you are just stumbling on, I definitely recommend you check out the first video in the series, which is the introduction that explains the quilt and the quilt along and how everything's running. So thus far in the quilt along, we have created, um, let me get these in order, a strawberry, or it's not a strawberry, it's an apple. That's what I get when I try and talk too fast. <laughs> We've created apple quilt blocks, and then the next week we created pineapple blocks, then strawberry blocks, and last week we covered the cherry quilt blocks. This week we are covering the B blocks, as I mentioned before. Um, this block features a lot of techniques that we used in previous quilt videos, so I will reference those, but I won't repeat the techniques. There is a flying geese block, and then snowballed corners, and bias strips uh, machine applique to create the antenna. Um, these are not actually biased, these are cut on um, a straight line but I refer to them as bias strips since you use a bias strip maker to create them. The technique that's new this week for this block are how we created these wings. Um, it's just a simple technique that allows you to create an odd angle on a quilt block um, without using a foundation paper piecing pattern. You do need to cut um, these wing pieces from the template that's included at the end of the pattern. As with all blocks in this quilt, there are three of this block in the finished quilt, but feel free to mix and match the blocks as you like. If you don't love this block, you can make more of another block. And let's go ahead and get started. I will walk you through all the steps to create this B quilt block. Just as with previous weeks, I'm going to follow the construction of the block in the same order that it is in the pattern. So on the pattern, the, um, Construction instructions, sounds kind of funny, uh, begin on page 11. And there is a template piece that you need to grab on the last side, last page of the pattern. Um, it should measure three and a half this way by six and a half this way. If you want to just double check that if you printed this pattern at home, um, that it printed the correct size. So the first thing we're going to do for the B block is create the wing sections. Um, I don't know what this technique is called. <laughs> um, it's just something that I kind of came up with um, a couple years ago and it's one I like to use a lot. This technique allows you to create different angles on your blocks without using foundation paper piecing. I personally don't mind foundation paper piecing, but I know a lot of you guys don't like it. I found that out the hard way when I wrote a pattern that had it. Um, so this is a way to kind of get around it, but you do need to cut a template. So you're gonna have to cut for each block two of these wing templates. And then you've got a number of squares. And you're gonna refer to the pattern so that you get this going the, the right direction. I'm working on the left side of the wing right now. So what we're going to do is you're going to take your piece of your square of fabric and lay it on top of the wing section angle in the position noted on the pattern and then you're going to stitch it with a quarter inch seam allowance and these two pieces are going to be flush with each other. So this one I have already done so you can kind of see what that looks like. And you need to do that for all four pieces of fabric on your wing sections. Here I've got the wing section pressed. Actually, it's upside down, just not to confuse you. I've sewn the squares to all four of those angled corners. And what you need to do now is you just square it up to three and a half by six and a half, which is what that piece was before you started. So this is really simple. You're just gonna go with the straight lines already existing on the white fabric, or the wing fabric in this case.
After you have sewn and trimmed that, do the same thing with the wing section on the other side. So here is my right section and my left section. Like I said before, they are opposites of each other. You're just going to take them after that and sew them to each other. Um, to do this, I like to use my little, I like to use the trick, the nesting seams trick. So I will probably on this piece here, come in and move the seams on one side. Um, be a little bit careful as you do this because you can kind of see after you trim, you get a little bit of a hole sometimes when you do it that way. So um, usually what I do is I just kind of get it like that to sew it and then I will come in here and clip part of the seam allowance so that that part of the seam allowance can go up and that part of the seam allowance can go down and that seems to fix that problem. But by having those seams um, nesting into each other, you'll get a more accurate um, seam in the middle of the wing of the block. Moving on to step four of the pattern, you are gonna create a flying geese block with the blue and the background fabrics. If you are just stumbling onto this video um, from somewhere else, this video is part of a series of six videos. So I have covered how to create a flying geese block in another video. I'll go ahead and link that up um, in the event that you either want a reminder of how to do that or you want, um, like I said, you just kind of stumbled in. So the remainder of this section of the block is quite simple to assemble.